Hey kids, welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 1, Two-Dimensional Arrays, 2D Arrays, Exercise Number 1. We have an Investigate and Modify lesson. We're going to run the program to observe the results. Then we're going to experiment with the program by making the following modifications. Change one line at a time, then run the program after each change to observe the result. Let's take a look at our code before we start making any changes. We have an array. Now we have two square brackets. It says August grades. And it looks like it's built into these rows and columns. And this right here is called a 2D array. A column is the vertical part. A row is the horizontal part. If you think back to an array, if we wanted to access one of the elements inside the square bracket, we put a number. If we wanted to access the first element here, we'd put a zero to get 85. Now we're gonna add that second square bracket and that is gonna be the column. So you still say which row you would like. So if I wanted to get 87, in the row it'd be at index number one, but now, I would have a second square bracket, and inside that, it is also going to be one indicating the column. I think we're going to experiment a little more with this, but some fundamentals are good to know to understand what's going on. Let's move ahead and see the rest of the code. We're instantiating a new object, MS Hamilton. It is getting that August grades 2D array, creating an integer current students. It is equal to the MS Hamilton object. We're getting the grade at one one. And I bet you, well, that's getting grade 87 right there through a get grade method. We're probably gonna see in teacher Java. Then we're gonna print what the current student is, this integer here. Then we're gonna set a grade. It looks like we are going to set one one or this 87 to 100 with the set grade method. We'll probably see that in teacher Java. Then we're getting that grade again at 1, 1, should be 87 and printing it off. And we're printing the first row and we're calling that object MS Hamilton and the get students grades. Take a look at this teacher Java. We have a private 2D array weekly grades. We can tell it's a 2D array because there's a two square brackets. One constructor, it takes one parameter, weekly grades, that 2D array. We have that get weekly grades that returns the weekly grades. We have that set weekly grades that sets the weekly grades we're getting. We have a get method. This is getting a specific element within the array with that row and column. Remember, Rows are the horizontal, columns are the vertical. We have a set grade. This looks like it sets an individual grade with that row and column. Then we have a get student grades method. This is returning a string. Looks like it loops through the weekly grades array and it adds the results up. Let's head back to the My Console. What do I think is gonna happen when I hit run? I think I'm gonna to get to grade 87. I'm gonna change that grade 87 to 100, then print that off. And then I'm gonna print the first row here. And I think it's gonna print 85, 90, and 78. Let's hit run and see if that's what happens. We have our 87, then set to 100. Then we're getting that first row printed off via that get student grades method. I think I understand what the code's doing. Let's start making some changes. In teacher Java, what does the values weekly grade one one refer to in the get grade method? Then we're gonna come back here in my console. We're gonna change the values in the call to the get grade method to access different elements from the August grades array. 
Let's go over to Teacher Java and look at this Weekly Grades 1 1. First, we have to go to the Get Grade method. This is the Get Grade method right here. And what the 1 1 is referring to is the row and column. And we talked a little bit about this already. Think of this as your Google Sheets, Excels, or even a table in a document. It's just rows and columns. This is what this is referring to. I think when we change that one, one, we're going to get different grades. Let's go back to my console. We're going to change this get grade number right here. Let's access 78. That is row zero. And the column zero, one, two should be two. Now, when I hit run, I should get 78. We got 78. Let's just verify we know what we're talking about. Let's do 89. That is in row 012. We'll put 2 here. And that is in column 01. Put a 1 right there. Now we should get 89. And we get 89. Number two in Teacher Java, what is happening in the for loop in the get student grades method? Try changing the zero in the condition. Does the output change? Why do you think this happened? Let's go find the get students grades. Here is that method. In our loop, this is our loop control variable. This is our condition. So this is the zero we're talking about. If we change this, are we going to get a different output? Well, our array is three by three. It doesn't matter if we were calling row zero, row one, or row two, it's not going to change. So if I change this to one, I should get the same print off because this is just controlling how long I'm looping through. The number of elements doesn't change. Let's hit run. Again, nothing changes. I could do two. Two is still three elements long. Again, same print out. If I go to three, well, there's only zero, one, two objects in my array. Three is out of bounds. I'm going to get an error. Change that back to zero. Why do I think this is happening? Again, this just controls which of the rows we're going to loop through. They're all three long, so it doesn't matter which row we're looping through. They all have the same length. We have two more. Try changing the zero in the line results plus equal weekly grades zero index plus return. Does the output change? Why do you think this happened? We have our results here. This is going to be the row zero, which if we go back to my console is 85, 90, 78. And that's what's been printing off as the first row. I think if I change the row, I'm gonna get a different row to print off. Remember, this is only one square bracket. Two, the second square bracket is the column. One is the row. Let's change this to one. Now, I should get that new set of values, 92, 87, 80, to print off. Well, let's see if we're right. 92, 180. Remember, I changed that to 100 in my code right here. We can test this again by putting 2 for the row. We should get that third row to print off. Let's see if we're right. 76, 89, 97. That is our third row. 
This loop right here is just stopping at each element in the row, printing it off, and then returning to the next line. Let's take a look at what we have to do for our last question. Add the following lines, then run the program to observe the results. That's control C. Go back to my console. Paste that in. What do I think is going to happen? I think we're going to print off the row and column here. Let's make some predictions. Two, zero, row zero, one, two, it's zero, 76. Well, that should be 76. Two, one, row zero, one, two, at one is 89. Two, two, zero, one, two, column, Zero, one, two is 97. Well, this should print off that last row again. Well, let's see if we're right. We changed it back in the method and we got that to print off again. Looks like this is the way we access individual elements in a 2D array. key takeaway from this lesson is what a 2D array is. And that is a row or column. And you might have seen this in Google Sheets, Excel, or even if you've made a table in a document. We've been working with 1D arrays, which are just rows. You can think of 2D arrays as of arrays of arrays. That means within each of the horizontal row, there is another array inside that. How do we create one of these 2D arrays? Same way we do a 1D array. This time we're just adding a second square bracket. We can declare and initialize an empty one using new, whatever our data type is. This time, instead of one, it is two square brackets. As you saw in this program, we can also initialize it full of elements already populated within the rows and columns. Throughout the rest of this lesson, we're going to explore 2D arrays a little more in depth. Hopefully, this video helped you understand what a 2D array is, how to create one, and use it. As always, if you have any questions, kids, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye. Bye. Bye.